Fred Gruzetsky's our main man today. He knows what he can do at Flushing Meadows. Runner-up in 1997, his sheer will overwhelms opponents. He hasn't played a lot of matches lately, but he'll be ready to fight. And Martina Hingis plays her second round match later. Since losing her composure at the French Open and winning only two games at Wimbledon, she has regained the world number one ranking with tournament victories in San Diego and Toronto. And before that, we look back at Pat from last night. He comes into this US Open as the two-time defending champion, but nursing a sore right shoulder. He played Cedric Pierlene. That's our first match. Good afternoon. We've had a strange US Open already, really. Tim Henman suffered a body blow yesterday, losing in the first round to Guillermo Cañas. He's intelligent enough to know that the world hasn't been knocked off its axis, but he'll need time to re-establish some momentum to his career. Now, I believe how this draw has changed round in the third set. That's where we join it. Rafter to serve and describing the action, Wally Mazur and Chris Bailey. So Rafter still got uh, quite a bit of work to do out here. He's firmly in control with a two sets to love lead. And now finds himself at one fall down in the third set. And Peerling starting to find his range on the returns, especially that off backhand. Once again, Chris, first serve 96 miles an hour, so Peeling getting plenty of time to look at it. <laughs> Rafter just pointing to where he thought the uh, ball had landed. It's a quick shot of the offending linesman. It's love 30. Brilliant. Fifteen, sorry. Well, on this occasion, I really think Rafter was looking for that off backhand return. A terrific lunge volley, and then once again, good control of the racket face at close range. He's just so concise at the net with his racket work, Pat Rafter. It's a great example to juniors who are learning to volley. Got to keep control of that racket face. One of the problems with a tendonitis type of injury is that you lose a lot of strength in the elbow, or excuse me, in the area. For example, if you've got tennis elbow, your forearm becomes very weak, tendonitis in the shoulder, and you really do lose a lot of strength over your head. see that by the way that Peeling is moving his body language on the court he's starting to uh, sniff out a little bit of an advantage here his tails up
Yes, it's funny the mindset of players just watching this match unfold. Cedric Perlin, he came out and played as though he expected to lose here tonight. And he's down two sets to love, and the, the early break in the third has rejuvenated him. And we saw that uh, with Karnas and Henman today. At the start, I don't think Karnas really felt he could win. And the moment he got that little half chance, he could sense that Henman was struggling. He really grew in confidence. So your mindset when you come out onto the court is such an important thing. Yeah, certainly uh, when Peeling took the court this evening, he would have had the utmost respect for Rafter, who uh, hadn't lost here in two years, or hasn't lost here in two years. Well, he's starting to look very good here. Perlin taking a leaf out of Rafter's book, very aggressive at the net. Well, unfortunately, we only get to see the final volley on the replay, but what was good about that point from Pierlene's perspective was the sneak. He came into the net, not necessarily on approach, but just when he saw Rafter had floated the return. Starting uh, to take control of this third set, whether he's taking control of the match, we'll find out. But certainly the Frenchman is in the ascendancy. This may or may not be uh, a good omen for Cedric Peeling, but the last time he came back from uh, a two-set deficit in a Grand Slam was back in 1993 at the French Open in the first round and against an Australian, Sand and Stolly. So Rafter serving now to stay in this third set at 2-5.
No. Certainly, uh, when we keep looking at the uh, miles per hour first serve, it really is uh, dropping all the time for after. Barely at the moment, uh, able to get over 100 miles per hour, which is uh, one of the reasons why Peelin is making so many more effective returns. Raft is never the fastest server in the men's game, but what he does do so well is hit with so much spin that when the ball hits the court, it kicks up violently and you're forced to make returns from above your head. So a hold to 15 for Rafter. And Pierlene will serve now for the third set. First time that Raft has really tried to clock one of those returns on his forehand side. I'm not sure whether that's a sign of frustration or not. set points for Peerley to take us into the fourth set. He takes it very nicely with his fifth ace. Now in 47 minutes on court and Rafter has a two sets to one lead. Stober back on court for Rafter, again uh, massaging the right shoulder. And Pierlene uh, doing well here. I'd just like to say you have a lovely voice. Change of shirt for Pierlin at the change of ends, and uh, another opportunity for Pat Rafter to get some more massage from the trainer on his right shoulder. 61% uh, apiece, first serve percentages, that's pretty good for both players. 
especially for Peely, and he tends to hit the ball a, a little bit harder on the first serve. Four set. <sighs> He continues to volley superbly, Pat Rafter, but this must be very frustrating. At the moment, his average serve speed for the match is 104 miles an hour. And at the moment, currently, he's serving at around the 90 mile an hour mark. So the shoulder is really starting to bother him. And I said earlier in the match, I felt like he could probably play through this type of injury. I'm not so sure anymore. And I just wonder whether we'll see Pat Rafter as this match progresses and as Pearlene gets better and better. I just wonder whether we'll see him continue. <laughs> Rafter has only uh, lost a five set match. And he's won the opening two sets once. And that coming in his uh, first ever five set match at 93 Australian Open. <laughs> well played. That loss coming to Jan Simmerink of the Netherlands. What a difference a set makes. Just look at Pialini, he's so full of running now. Players are like sharks, they can sense blood in the water. Use. Assistance from the net court, but this is great hitting from Pialini at the back of the court. Lengthy back swings on his ground shots, but he generates a lot of power, a lot of racket head speed. <laughs> oh, we're being treated some, to some fine shot making by both players. It's the first time really that Rafter has stayed back on the second serve, Peeling taking the opportunity to take the net away from Rafter. And what a shot Pat comes up with to win the point. see from Rafter's reaction how important he felt the opening service game was of the fourth set he takes it one love he leads Healy is starting to realize that maybe his man's in a little bit of trouble and uh, if he can just keep plugging away then he's still in with a good shot 
Yeah, no doubt about that. Pierlene has certainly livened up this last 45 minutes. He's moving well, he's hitting the ball particularly hard. And you can just see by the look on Rafter's face that as Stover gets his fingers into the muscle, and there's a good chance that the muscle around the injury goes into spasm, that it's pretty painful. Yes. So this is a shame, obviously, two weeks ago he was struggling. He was really feeling a lot of pain in that shoulder. Hopefully he thought two weeks would have been enough. It's now appearing that this might be a longer-term injury. The problem that uh, Rafter has, I, I think, would, would be that uh, he doesn't want to, to make it any worse than it is, he doesn't want to, to get a, a really long, long-term injury. Chris, just while we were discussing Rafter's injury, Cedric Pialin had called for the supervisor, Bill Gilmore from Australia, and asked how come Rafter was receiving so many treatments. He felt that uh, he was only entitled to two as it was a pre-existing injury. Gilmore just enlightening you as to the rules. And the rules state that as long as, uh, well, Pat Rafter cannot have an injury timeout, but he can have as many treatments as he likes as long as they are within the change of end time. Having said that, it's never easy playing an injured player because you start to play the man and not the ball. Pat Rafter discovered that this year in the Davis Cup quarterfinal against the States when he played Todd Martin, who was dehydrated and struggling. love game of this set for Cedric Peerlin and uh, more worrying for Pat Rafter the first love game of the match for the Frenchman as well the way this is progressing you'd have to think that Rafter has to pinch this set somehow win the match in four if it goes to five I can't see him finishing about an injury in the first round of a major tournament you've got to win seven best of five set matches to win the men's tournament and that's a big ask to be carrying any niggling injuries into a, a grand slam there's a good chance you won't come out the other side So uh, I think we probably both agree on this, Wally, that from what we've seen from Raft this evening, as far as the injury is concerned, that seven best of five set matches, I think, will be too much for him. <laughs> well, after now, because Peeling is really starting to sight these slower deliveries because of the injury, starting to stay back off the first and second serves and that's really playing into Pierlene's hands two break points for the Frenchman Cedric Peeling takes uh, a step closer 
to getting himself back into this match, gets the uh, early break in this fourth set, 2-1, he leads. A lot going around uh, in his head. Should I keep playing? Should I just hold up my hands and say it too much? Pilling though, getting on with it, doing the job. And serving with the break, 2-1. Two hours up. <laughs> Vital, really, for Peeling to keep the pressure on. He's done well to get himself back into this match. He's just got a break of serve, and he really needs to keep the pressure firmly on Pat Rafter. Well, it's a calamitous game so far, really, from Pierling. Fourth double fault. And he's really presented Rafter with a golden opportunity to break straight back. Three of them. Got it back. Two games all. That may just be the break of serve that Rafter needs just to re energize himself and to take his mind off the pain a little bit. I don't think he could quite believe what he was seeing there on his new digital camera. I guess the irony of Rafter's particular injury is that it's really only bothering him on serve. When his arm's up above his head, ground strokes, he's fine. Still quite capable of breaking Pearlene. As opposed to a knee injury, for example, which just affects every aspect of your play.
Interesting that Raft is starting to stay back much more on his first and second serves. And taking away the, the quality of Pirlin's returning. point for Cedric Perlin and Chris you just get the feeling Pat pulled out of Indianapolis two weeks ago with this very injury but this is the US Open he is the reigning champion and there's a lot of pride he's fighting very hard to try to find a way out One thing, uh, Wally, that, that most Aussies that you ever play against uh, and ever meet are good at, and that's fighting. And uh, I don't say that just because you're sitting next to me. I think that's one of the really refreshing things about Pat Rafter in the world of tennis is that he seems to be a throwback to earlier days, Laver, Rose, or Newcomb, where they played hard, but they also enjoyed themselves. And it's nice to see in a sporting star these days. Second chance now for Pierlin to break yet again. Yes. Courageous shot there from Rafter. He had a about a chest-high forehand volley, and he opted to play the drop volley, which is a pretty low percentage shot on a hard court. But he executed very nicely. That's one of the fastest serves that Raft has hit in a long time, 110 miles per hour down the middle. Fourth ace. quick so so quick Rafter he's fighting the whole way he may be in pain but he's really giving it as much as he can give and he takes a 3-2 lead fourth set and leads by two sets to one well Chris if anything that since Rafter's arm has deteriorated the tennis has gotten better Pialin has become far more urgent. He's hitting very freely from both wings now, and he's moving particularly well. And Raft has taken up the fight, and it's actually been very entertaining about the last half hour, 45 minutes. It sounds cruel to say that, given that Raft is struggling with an injury, but this is some good stuff. You can see here Pialin, this time being the aggressor. Great little low half volley there that he picked up at Raft. cat-like, six foot two, moves as well as anybody. I think uh, when you look at the match so far, that Peeling, I think, probably walked out and thought, well, I haven't really got much of a chance. I'm playing uh, the, the two-time winner. Uh, 
he's one of the best players uh, around uh, on the hard courts and, and really the way that I've been playing the season I've had uh, coming to sort of the twilight years of my career um, I'm going to do well to uh, to get into the match and as soon as you're right as soon as he's seen that that Rafter is struggling he's, his tail's gone up he's looked a lot more interested in the match he's become a lot more urgent around the ball and uh, it's making for some entertaining play